Hello, I'm Tim Shubridge for Cherry Audio and welcome to part two of my look at the Elka X, which is Cherry Audio's faithful recreation of the incredibly rare and incredibly wonderful Synthex. What we're listening to here is one of the factory presets. There's loads of factory presets. They really are very, very good. They really showcase the Elka X uh, and, and showcase its full potential. Um, now, if you listen very carefully, with this particular patch, as well as it being very stereo, there's, it's, it's massive in the stereo field, which is why I've got my headphones on so I can hear what you're hearing. As well as it being very stereo, there are actually two sounds going on at the same time. And this is the real power of the Elka X, and it was the real power of the original Elka Synthex. And that is that the original Synthex had two completely separate synth engines inside it, which you could layer on top of each other or split across the keyboard. Now these days we take uh, those, those capabilities for granted in modern polysynths. I'm thinking of the Polybrute, uh, the Novation Summit, the Moog One. Moog One's got three uh, synth engines inside it. It's, it's kind of, you know, we take it for granted these days, but back in the very early 80s, it was quite a rarity. And the Synthex allowed you to have these layers or splits on the keyboard with completely different sounds. So let's sort of look into this patch in a little detail and see how it's made up and see how you can specify these layers and get them to work for you. So first things first, where do we specify on the front panel here whether we want to just play a, a single synth engine with our full eight voices of polyphony or we want to have layers or splits. But we do that here in the keyboard section. You'll see three buttons, single, double and split. Single means full polyphony, just one synth engine. Double means two synth engines layered on top of each other. And split means split across the keyboard. And when we do split, you'll see there it's showing the split point and we can set the split point very, very easily by just by pressing the button again so it flashes and then choosing where we want that split point to be. So we're going to go with uh, layers here, the double button, because that's what this particular preset is that I'm, I was playing to you before. Um, so we've got these two sounds going on, uh, two layers, two synth engines. So how does it work with all of these controls? Because these controls can only be showing us one of those patches at any point in time. Well that's where we come down to this section here called panel control. You'll see here we've got lower and upper. We'll talk about utility a little bit later on. Lower and upper. At the moment upper is selected and that means uh, that our upper patch or our, our second patch, our second synth engine is what all of these controls are pointing to. If I switch to lower you'll see that they're moving. If I just switch between them you'll see that the controls are moving. So upper layer is in red and lower layer is in green by the little green LED here and you'll see that on the panel itself when a button is toggled on and we're looking at the lower panel you'll see that we're looking at green LEDs everywhere and when we're looking at the upper layer uh, when a button is turned on we can see them in red so it's very very clear as to what um, these uh, patches are for each of the layers. Now how can we listen to them on their own um, and, and, and then sort of like combine them and then hear them combined? Let me show you that. We have a layer solo button here. So if I go for the upper layer first of all and I click on this layer solo button, now when I hold down a note we're just hearing the upper, um, the upper patch on its own. If we switch to lower, you'll see that the color of the layer solo button turns to green, which means we're now soloing the lower layer. 
and we have a completely different sound. Now there's two controls here which are really important when it comes to layers. Each layer has got its own volume control. So you've got a master volume control for the whole preset, um, but each of the layers has its own uh, layer of volume control, which is, which is really great for just getting the right mix between the two different sounds you want to play. And for me, what's really exciting is that each of the layers has its own pan control. Uh, you can pan the layer, the sound, within the stereo field. And if I you know, flick between these two layers, you'll see here that the lower layer is panned slightly towards the left, and the upper layer is panned slightly towards the right. You can get these really massive stereo effects if that's what you want. Obviously, you can just pan them centrally. If you really want mono sounds, that's absolutely fine. But you've got full control over both of the synth engines, both of the patches, the layers that you are hearing with the pan control and getting the mix exactly the way you want to with the layer volume controls. So it's really easy to build up a patch. You can just switch to one of the layers, solo it, create the patch how you want to, um, and then when you're ready, switch to the lower patch, build that up, and mix them into each other and get the effect that you want. Um, the, the, it's a really, really, really powerful feature. Now, the one thing I haven't mentioned about the Elka X here is that in terms of polyphony, when you add two layers together, there is no loss in polyphony. That, thanks to a digital emulation, that's what Cherry Audio are able to do for you. Now, if you really want to reduce your polyphony down to four notes of polyphony and you know be faithful to the original synthex, then you can do that. Here, over in the keyboard section, we have a maximum number of voices set here. So by default, it's eight, um, but we can actually go all the way down to two voices if we wanted to, and all the way up to 16 voices. Now, although it wasn't common back in the very early 1980s for a polyphonic analog synthesizer to have layer capability, how they were implemented in the Synthex was quite basic. That's not the case with the Elka X, which is a modern day digital recreation of the Synthex. In the Elka X, we've got some really cool capabilities to help us work with layers that Cherry Audio have provided. Let me show you that now. So you'll see here in the panel control, with our lower and our upper selection buttons, we've got a utility button. It's actually a menu. When I click on it, I get this little menu up. Now what we can do here is we can take uh, the current lower layer settings and copy them to the upper layer and vice versa, upper to lower. Now when you've got actual layers on top of each other, it doesn't really matter which one's on top of the other one, um, but this will be more important when you have got a split going on on your keyboard. So you've got real good flexibility here copying from upper to lower, lower to upper. Um, and you can also reset uh, one of the layers if you want to. Not reset the whole preset that you're working on, but just reset one of the layers. You've got that capability here with this menu option. Thirdly, and this is something I haven't mentioned, you can copy the effects because each of these layers has got its own completely unique effects settings. So in terms of the chorus, the delay, and the reverb, you set those up on the front panel for a specific layer. So you can have some really cool effects uh, going on with different effects on your layers. And if you want to take your effect settings for one layer and copy them to the other one, you can do that with this menu option here. Finally, and this is the really cool part, 
we've got an import export menu option and what you can do is you can sort of you can open a preset up you can listen to the different layers you've got going on in there and say wow that layer sounds really really cool I wonder what it would sound like if I combined it with something else completely different well you can do that you can copy to memory either your upper or lower uh, layer settings and and by copy we're talking about like copy paste on a computer so you can copy the settings to memory you can then go and open up a completely separate preset and then paste those settings down into one of the layers either upper or lower so it's really really powerful uh, the ability here to play around with layers try combining them see what effects you get is kind of endless and of course you've got all of the factory presets there you can take any of those sounds um, those, those layers in those presets and try combining them yourself and creating your own layers to go with them. There's, there's, there's years of experimentation here in the Elk X. Okay, so just one more thing I want to cover in this particular video um, and the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed when I was showing you the maximum voice count here that it goes all the way down to two. Uh, why would you want to choose just two voices? It sounds a bit limiting, doesn't it? Well, there's a very good reason for that, and that's because we've got a number of different play modes. Now, just I want to point out at this point that these play modes here are per layer, so you can have completely differently set up layers if you want to and play them together. We have got poly, and then we've got two monophonic modes. We've got single and unison. Uh, and that's where the voice count comes in. So I've got here a really, really simple patch. I've actually taken one of the uh, really good factory presets and I've kind of stripped it back just to, to be able to do this demonstration with. It sounds like this. It's a monophonic kind of brass patch. Right, very, very simple. We can switch to monophonic mode. Here we've got multi-trigger on, so the envelopes uh, are triggering with every note that I hold down. We can turn that off and then we've got true kind of legato mode. Like that. And this multi-trigger button works with unison and that's as I said why we have the ability to come right down to two voices because unison with two voices can sound really cool because we've got here a detune control so this is two voices no detune and let's add some in It's a really wide range of detune. It goes really crazy at the top here. So that's just two voices. Let's go for four. This is eight. And let's go mad, go for 60. I'm probably clipping uh, with this because you can hear that the volume's getting louder and louder, which is naturally what you'd expect. And remember that is on a per layer basis. So you can have loads of unison detune going on with one of the layers and strip it back and have something completely different in terms of sound with another layer. It's incredibly flexible with our layers, uh, with our um, stereo panning capabilities, uh, the effects per layer, the different uh, play modes per layer. Uh, it, it's an incredibly powerful polysynth. That's the Elka X.